Welcome to Cross Connection Church Online. We are so grateful that you're joining us for service today. I'm Pastor Garrett, and we want to let you know that if you want to find out any information about Cross Connection Church, about what we're doing, please check out our website and go to lifeinconnection.com. That's our, our website where you're going to find out more about us, what we're doing, and uh, how you can be connected. And with the broadcast being, of course, online and you being at home, we would like to connect with you. And one of the ways that we can do that is we're encouraging our audience, if you would take a video of yourself and whoever you're watching with, um, let us know who you are, where you're watching from, and send that video to the number, the text line that we have, 760-814-1223. And just let us know, again, where you're watching from, who you're watching with, and how you are enjoying the Cross Connection Church broadcast from home. Because you are part of our church, and we want, uh, we want to know where you're at and just be able to be encouraged by you. So check that out. And please stick around to the end of our broadcast today. Um, we'll be announcing uh, some, some of our announcements, what's going on right now at Cross Connection Church, letting you know how you can be involved in those. Um, and of course, if you came prepared to give today, you can do so online from home at give.lifeinconnection.com. Let's go ahead and jump to the broadcast. Well, I don't know how you feel about this time of year, but I do think, like the old song says, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Just about every day from Labor Day on, I find that my joy and anticipation builds right the way through the month of December. More than a few times, I have had conversations though with other pastors about this time of the year, around Christmas. and. Several times I've had guys who preach through the scriptures every single year, pastors at other churches express to me that they don't really like preaching during the Christmas season because they feel as though they are being a little bit redundant in the messages that they give. It can be difficult to be original when you are talking about the same topics, the same content every single Christmas season. 
But I have to say that I don't think that I can relate to that sentiment at all. Probably because I, I lost the sense that I needed to be original a long time ago when I realized that every single time I thought that I found something entirely new or original in the scripture, it didn't take me long to find that somebody else had taught or wrote the exact same thing before. Just as we read in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1, there is ultimately nothing new under the sun. But another reason that I just don't really feel the, the need to be original when you get to topics having to do with Christmas is that I have found that the most important things that we need to know, we find that they rarely are novel or new. Many times we need to hear the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. And that's why when we partake of communion here at Cross Connection Church regularly, we share the same exact passages of scripture talking about the same exact things about the bread and the cup and what those things represent. The most important things that we need to hear are things that we need to hear over and over and over again. They're not new, they're not novel, they are the same old important truths. For example, that same old important saying is still true. Jesus is the reason for the season. Christmas is all about Jesus. And I hope that you know that, I'm sure that you probably do. And I hope that it never ceases to be the, the primary thing that we associate with this wonderful time of the year, that Jesus is the focal point of everything that we do. In my book, the most wonderful time of year is this time of the year. And what is it about this time of year that makes it so wonderful? Well, of course, there are the gatherings with friends and family, the parties. There are the decorations. My family, we put up Christmas lights and all that stuff. We did it before Thanksgiving this year, and I know that you are apparently not supposed to do that. But my family and I, we were going to be heading out on a short family vacation the day after Thanksgiving. So we had to break protocol and uh, put up the things outside and inside. It had to be done, so we put up the tree as well. And uh, in our house, it's not just a tree, it's multiple trees. So. We did all of that before Thanksgiving. Some people might say it's kind of like a holiday faux pas, but I don't think so. It was great to put all of it up. And everybody in our household gets really excited when we start to put all of the Christmas lights up and the Christmas decorations. And we bring out all of the Christmas ornaments that we have collected with our kids for the last many years. And it's joyful. It's a lot of fun. This time of the year is fun. It is enjoyable. And it's enjoyable because of the gatherings, the decorations, and it's enjoyable because of the things that you can only get this time of the year. As a number of the guys here on our staff, some of our pastors, they would say that eggnog, that's one of the, the great things that you can only get this time of the year. However, uh, I'm sure to bother somebody with this, I don't like eggnog very much at all. But if you are or come from a, a German background, then maybe it's this time of year, there's these cookies that only really come out this time of year called Lebkuchen. And I know those are, those are good. I have been getting my favorite Starbucks creation, the caramel brulee latte, that's only available this time of the year, although it has become way too expensive. So I uh, can't get as many of those as I might in the past. One of my other favorite things that comes out only this time of year is the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup Christmas tree. It's like the, the perfect ratio of chocolate to peanut butter and the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup Christmas trees. And I know they, they don't only make the Christmas trees. They make hearts at Valentine's Day. They make eggs at Easter. They make footballs when football season comes around. But there's something about these ones that have the right ratio of chocolate peanut butter goodness. It's just amazing. So there's those things that you can only get this time of year. And I'm sure that there are some things that you probably love that only you can get during this time of year as well. And when we come to the holiday Christmas season, it always feels to me like those things just kind of go too quickly. This time of year flies by. But I think that these things do help us to have fun and, and make this time of year memorable. For sure, one of the things that makes this holiday so fun and wonderful, if you ask any child, 
is the gifts, the presents. The gifts of Christmas are one of the things that make this time of year so wonderful. We love to receive gifts. And actually, we love not only to receive gifts, but we love to give gifts, sometimes even more. Jesus taught, and it's recorded in the book of Acts chapter 20. He says it is more blessed to give than to receive. We'll talk more about that verse in just a little bit. But why do we love to give and receive gifts? I think that one of the answers to that question is that God who made us, he created us in his image and likeness, and God loves to give gifts. I'm not sure if you knew that, but the scriptures make very, very clear that God loves to give gifts. In the Old Testament, nestled in kind of a weird, interesting story about Israel is a fascinating character that shows up in the book of Numbers in Numbers chapter 24. His name is Balaam. And in Numbers 24, verse 1, it, he actually shows up a little bit before that, but in Numbers 24, verse 1, it says that Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless his people, Israel. Now, you may be one of those kind of super technical readers of the Bible, and you see that passage there in Numbers chapter 24, verse 1, and you say, well, that's speaking about the people of Israel. It's not speaking about us, Christians, the church. And technically, you would be right, but I... I don't see any reason to not apply this truth as a general principle to us as well. But if you are one of those super technical people that says that that's ah, talking about Israel, it's not talking about the church, it's not talking about Christians, then let me give you a New Testament reaffirmation of that exact same general principle from what we find from Jesus. I think it's pretty certain that every single one of us at one point or another, we can find ourselves worrying and anxious about one thing or another. Each of us can get a little bit anxious from time to time. We worry about, worry about all kinds of different things. Even though that we know we shouldn't worry, even though we know that it's not healthy to do so. I mean, even modern medical science says that worry is not a good thing, anxiety is not a good thing. Even though we know that the Bible commands that we not worry, we still find that we worry. And Jesus gives us a teaching on worry in Luke chapter 12, and he gives us a command that we not worry, and then he gives us a lot of reasons not to worry, and then he says this in Luke chapter 12, verse 32. He says, do not fear, little flock, for, and this, this is that general principle that I was mentioning, for it is your father's good pleasure to give. Now, specifically, Jesus says, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, but what we learn from that text is that it makes our father in heaven happy to give. It is his good pleasure to give to his children. And also, we find this same idea come from the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 1. We read in verse 3 of Ephesians 1, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. He's given us great gifts. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. And then down in verse 5, at the end of verse 5, he says, According to the good pleasure of his will. So we see it in the book of Numbers. We see it in Luke chapter 12 from Jesus. We see it here from the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 1. It pleases our Father in heaven to bless us and to give us good gifts. And not only that, we read in another place in the New Testament, in James chapter 1 verse 17, a favorite of mine, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and it comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Every good gift comes from our good God. He is the source of every good gift. All good gifts are from our God. And being that less than two weeks ago we celebrated Thanksgiving, I have been spending some time just personally in my own morning time in the scriptures with the Lord to take some time to think about some of the ways that God has blessed me, some of the blessings that he has given to me. It is good to count our blessings. It can sometimes be helpful to even write them down, like make a list of all the different things that you can think of. Just take 10 minutes, tomorrow morning maybe, maybe this afternoon, and make a list of all the different things that you can in 10 minutes that God has gifted you with, blessed you with. It can be helpful to write those things down and then to count your blessings. It is even sometimes really good to share our gratitude with others. 
And when we write down the gifts and blessings that God has given to us, when we, we count them out and list them, like, look at all these things that God has blessed me with, and then we share our gratitude for those things with others. I have discovered that doing so, it increases our joy, it heightens our joy. And that's one of the things that I think we all wanna experience this time of year, is our, our joy increasing. And when you share those, those things that you're thankful with, with other people, it not only increases your joy, but it often increases their joy as well. They are rejoicing in all those good gifts. If you take some time to write down your blessings and count them up and share those same things with others, then you will find very, very quickly that you have a lot to be grateful for. And we should be grateful for the things that God has given to us. We should have gratitude. And as I've taught before here at our church, gratitude is even a gift that God has given to us. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a bit. But James chapter 1 verse 17 reminds us that every one of those good gifts, if you take the time to write down all the things that God has blessed you with and you number them out and you share them with others, every single one of those good gifts is a blessing that came from our Father in heaven. Every good and perfect gift is from above. I was reading an article on the topic of Thanksgiving a few years ago. I don't remember where exactly the article was from, but the basic point was that gratitude is an important and necessary component of a happy life. But the, the article was making the point that while we know that gratitude is really important as you know, giving us meaning and joy in life, the article highlighted that there are more and more people in our culture that don't really know who it is that they should be thankful to. We have a lot to be thankful for. And yet there are people in our society, in our culture, in one of the most blessed, you know, practically speaking, one of the most blessed societies in the world who don't know to be thankful to who, you know, who am I to be thankful to? But James clears everything up there in that passage because every good and perfect gift is from God. So what has God blessed us with? What's he blessed you with? What's he blessed me with? Do you have a place to live, a car to drive, a family to love, a job or school to go to, food to eat, clean water, a warm bed, electricity? Maybe you even have more than just the basics in our society. You've got things like Amazon Prime and you know, you're, you're watching this on a, a device, a phone or a, a tablet or a TV or whatever it may be. If there's anything good in your life, ultimately those things are from God. One of the amazing things about being a child of God is that you discover as time goes by that even the things in your life that you go through that are challenging and difficult and that in the beginning you wouldn't necessarily put those things down in the good column about the good things that you have in your life at the time that you're going through them they don't seem good but you can be thankful to God for those things and in those things as well why because as we learn in Paul's letter to the church at Rome all things work together for good to those who love God and are the called according to his purpose. So even the difficult things that we go through, the things that we wouldn't necessarily call good in the moment, those things God is able to use in our life to bring about good things. But, you know, I've been talking mostly about tangible or physical gifts. You know, the car that you drive or the house that you live in, that we should be thankful to God for those things. But there are a lot of other even greater gifts than that, that the Apostle Paul mentions in that passage that I mentioned just a moment ago in Ephesians chapter 1, where we read that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. What are the spiritual blessings that God has blessed us with? If you take some time just to go through that passage in Ephesians chapter 1, you're going to find at least six things that I quickly underlined as I was reading through that passage earlier today. He chose us in Christ. That is a blessing that God has given to us, a spiritual blessing. God chose you in Christ. And as he chose you in Christ, he predestined us to adoption into his family so that we could be his children. We're not you know, servants in his household as much as we are his children that he has adopted. So he chose us, he predestined us to adoption to be his kids. He has made us accepted in Christ. We're accepted into his family. And in him, we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins. And, and as he has forgiven our sins, he's poured out his grace upon us. And in the future, he is going to give us the fullness of his kingdom when he gathers us together to be with him in paradise forever. So there's a nice, beautiful list of some spiritual blessings that God has given to us. And when you recognize 
the truth of James chapter 1, verse 17, that every good gift is from God, then you can begin to, as you count your blessings and look at the spiritual blessings and the practical blessings, you can begin to change your perspective, realizing that everything God gives or allows, He uses ultimately for our good in this life and bringing us into the next. And, and those thoughts lead us into kind of the next important passage and point. And that is also from the Apostle Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, where Paul writes this, Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty or boastful or arrogant, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who, note this, gives us richly all things to enjoy. Every good gift from God is for our enjoyment. Now, for some people, when they hear me say that, every good gift from God is for our enjoyment. For some people, that point causes some people to kind of pause and you know, hmm, and think about that a little bit. And that's because for some reason, there is kind of a stoic monasticism that pervades American thinking, American Christian thinking. And I'm not convinced that that is the way that God wants us to live necessarily. What I mean by that is that there are a lot of people who seem to think that enjoyment of things that we have is somehow a bad thing, as if enjoyment is something of our flesh. And maybe you might be able to make a good point for that or a good case for that, but I think that you can also make a much better case that God who has blessed us and is pleased to give us good gifts, he desires us to enjoy those gifts. Now, I want to get back to this point in just a moment, but we shouldn't skip too quickly over the important teachings that we find here in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, before we get back to the point that I was making. In addition to Paul promoting our enjoyment in the blessings that God has given to us, he teaches us that we who are rich, and that is every one of us that will see this message, because you're probably, like I said, watching this on a TV or watching this on a tablet or watching this on your phone. So you have some, you have some pretty practical blessings. So we are pretty rich. And Paul says in that passage that we should not be haughty or literally we should not be high-minded or proud. That is, we shouldn't boastfully think that we have what we have because we deserve it or we gained it by us being so amazing or awesome. We just happen to be born in a blessed culture and society where we have a lot of abundance. So we should not be boastful about what we have, but we also, Paul says, should not trust in uncertain riches. Just because you have what you have today does not mean that you will have it tomorrow. In fact, a really great example of that is the Old Testament book of Job, which is a challenging book to read, but it reminds us that we should not trust in uncertain riches. Instead, our focus and our trust needs to be in God. He is the one who gives good gifts. And he gives us those good gifts richly to us to enjoy. But after all of that, I believe it is absolutely true that every good gift from God is for our enjoyment. It pleases God to bless us, we find in the scriptures. It is the Father's good pleasure to give us good gifts. We saw that in Luke chapter 12 from Jesus. According to the good pleasure of his will, the Father has given us every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And why does it please God to do all of this? The answer to the question aligns with the teaching of Jesus quoted by Paul in Acts 20, verse 35, that I mentioned earlier, where Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. God is pleased to bless us because there is an inherent blessing in giving gifts. And anyone who has ever given a gift knows this. You have probably experienced the joyous blessing of giving gifts to other people. And what is that blessing? The great blessing of giving gifts to other people is the pleasure of seeing the enjoyment had by the recipient of the gift. Now, imagine for a moment that you worked really, really hard to get a gift for someone you love, maybe for your child. And then that individual opens the gift that you worked really, really hard to get them. And they kind of casually like look at it and they, they don't even seem like happy about it. Like, oh, thanks. I appreciate it. And then they do nothing with the gift that you have worked so hard to give to them. How happy would you be if they did not have any sort of joy 
buy the gift that you got for them and you worked so hard for. Would you want to give that person another gift in the future? You probably would not. And, and, and this illustration, I, I think this is a real challenge for my own wife because one of the sad things is that she has to put up with me and I can sometimes have kind of a flat affect in response to all kinds of different things. And she, maybe more than any other activity, loves to be a blessing to others and to give good gifts. And she just gets such great joy in giving things to other people and seeing their joy increase. So if their joy doesn't increase when she's giving that gift or when you're giving a gift to someone, then it's kind of like, why, why am I doing this? The joy and enjoyment the recipient of a gift exhibits increases our joy and enjoyment when we give that person a gift. And, and so we, we want to see that joy and enjoyment. In a sense, there seems to be a selfish motivation, if you will, in giving gifts, and it seems as though God is okay with that. That's why Jesus said it is more blessed to give than to receive. He doesn't chastise people for experiencing joy and giving gifts because you get to see the joy of the person who receives the gift. He has no problem with that. So I think it is true that our enjoyment of God's gifts makes God happy. But this, of course, is not the only reason God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. God gives us gifts not only for our enjoyment and not only for his joy, but also we read this from the Apostle Peter in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Every good gift from God is given to us to bless others. I mentioned a few minutes ago that gratitude is a gift that God has given to us. Gratitude is a good thing. And every good thing, James 1.17 says, is from God. So God has given us the gift of gratitude. Gratitude is a gift given to us by God for our good and also to bless others. God gave us the gift of gratitude for the increase of our joy and enjoyment. And even non-Christian you know, non secular research continues to prove what theologians have taught for centuries. Gratitude is an important key to a happy life. If you desire to be happier, then use the gift of gratitude that God has given to you to express gratitude to God and to others for the things that you have, and you will be a happier person. God gave us the gift of gratitude for the increase of our joy, but it also increases God's joy. Gratitude is a form of praise, and when you are grateful and you express gratitude to God, you are praising him for his goodness. God gave us the gift of gratitude for us to bless others. He, he gave it to us to give, joy, or give glory and praise to him, but he also gave it to us to bless others. Grat gratitude is a gift that God gave you and I so that we could turn around and give it to others. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God, we should use the gift of gratitude that God has given to us and minister it to others. Now, of course, gratitude is not the only gift that God has given to us that we should minister to others, but it is certainly one of the gifts that God has given to us that we should share with other people. We should minister to others. Every good gift God has given you is for your enjoyment. As you enjoy those gifts, your enjoyment of those gifts praises God. It makes him happy and it increases his joy and his gifts are maximally perfected when we use them to be a blessing to other people. So what exactly does this look like? Well, as I said, this is true with the gift of gratitude, but this is also true with the other gifts that God has given to you. Maybe they are gifts of being able to play an instrument, musical gifts, or being hospitable. Maybe they are gifts, financial gifts that God has given to you. If you have a gift from God, when you use it, the use of it increases your joy and it brings praise and glory to the one who gave you the gift, to God, and it blesses others. So let me give you an example. God gave me a gift in understanding what the scriptures say and then teaching and preaching that to other people. And as I use that gift, I experience joy. And I share that joy with others as I teach and preach the scriptures, hopefully helping their joy to increase as well. So why do I study and teach and preach the scriptures? I study and teach and preach the scriptures because it's a gift that God has given to me, but it brings me joy. I find great joy in sitting down, studying through the scriptures, and then sharing those things with other people. 
So why do I study, teach, and preach the scriptures? Because I enjoy doing it. God gave me the gift, and it brings me joy to use the gift. And an added major plus is that it brings other people joy, and it pleases and glorifies God in the process. And that, I believe, will happen for you as well. When you use the gifts that God has given to you, you become a blessing to others, and you praise God through using that gift. Your use of the gift will bring you joy, it will bring others joy, and it will glorify God. Our God has gifted us. It makes Him happy when we use those gifts that He has given to us, and it blesses others when we use them as well. So what are the things that you thoroughly enjoy doing in this life? What are the things that really bring you joy? Maybe it's playing music, maybe it's singing, maybe it's photography, maybe it's woodworking, maybe it's serving others, maybe it is teaching. Those things that you love to do are probably some of the things that God has gifted you with. And when you use those things, your joy increases, your praise of God increases, and you become a blessing to others. Do you realize that every one of you are gifted by God? And your joy and happiness would actually begin to increase if you would begin to use the gift that God has blessed you with to bless others. If you're not fully happy, then it just may be that you're not using the gifts that God has given to you properly to praise him and to bless others. And I just, I can't drive this home enough. You would be happier if you did. I can promise you of that. Just like in the Old Testament, we read about Abraham, the father of the faith. He was blessed to be a blessing. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. So we are blessed by God to be a blessing to others. And if you are not using the gifts that God has given to you, then you are not fulfilling the purpose that God made you for or gave you the gifts for. And I don't think that you're going to enjoy or be as happy as you could be or joyful as you could be until you begin to step out and start using the gift that God has given to you. Some of you have a gift that you're not using and you need to start using it. I don't know what that gift is, but you probably do. Maybe it's music or singing or giving or faith or serving or praying or teaching or hospitality or photography or videography or technology or who knows what it is. But every good and perfect gift comes from God. That is a gift, a talent, an ability that God has given to you and it has been given to you by him for your enjoyment. And when you use it, it is a form of praise to God. Just like if you give a gift to someone and you see them using it, it brings you joy. It brings God joy when you use the gifts that God has given to you. It's a form of praise and it becomes a blessing to others. Paul wrote to those who are rich. We, we saw it in 1 Timothy chapter 6. And he says in verse 17, command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. And then he follows that up with these words in verse 18. Let them do good, those who are gifted. Let them do good, that they may be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold of eternal life. God has richly blessed and gifted each of us. He's gifted you. Therefore, share the riches of your gifts with others. And in doing so, you will be rewarded in eternity. One final passage, one final point before we wrap up today. We read previously in Ephesians chapter 1 that God is pleased to bless us with every spiritual blessing, with all of these rich gifts. And if you look back one more time at that passage in Ephesians chapter 1, it says in verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Note this, to the praise of the glory of his grace. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he has made us accepted in the Beloved. Every good gift, when used to bless others, brings glory to God. When people see your good works according to the grace and gifting of God and all the things that he has poured out upon you in his rich grace, when other people see you giving glory to God by using your gifts, that glorifies the one who gave you the gifts, your Father in heaven. 
God has gifted you. The gifts that God has given to you are to be enjoyed. They're given to you for your joy. And when you enjoy those things, you bring praise to God who gave you those gifts. You make him happy. And when you enjoy those gifts by using them to praise God, you also bless others. And when you bless others by using those gifts that God has given you, you glorify God before other people. And those are all good things, important things to think about as we get ready to celebrate Christmas here in just a few weeks and we exchange gifts and give gifts. God has blessed you so that you would enjoy those blessings, that you would bring glory to him, that you would bless others, and that you would glorify him among all other people. And so I hope that as you think about these things, you can begin to express joy by using those gifts for the glory of God. Father God, I pray as we get ready for this holiday season, it goes by so quickly. I pray in one sense that you kind of slow it down so that we can rejoice in all the wonderful things that this holiday season reminds us about. It reminds us that you are the gift giving God and you've blessed us with exceedingly precious promises and grace, grace that is gonna extend on into eternity where the riches of your grace is gonna be revealed to us more fully. But Lord, I pray that we would rejoice in and enjoy the great things that you've blessed us with for your glory and that those things would draw other people to you, that they would know you also. For we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. With a cry of praise, my heart will proclaim. You are good, yes, you are good. You are good. In the sun of rain, my life celebrates. You are good. You are good. And I sing because you are good. Thank you for joining us for our broadcast today. That was an excellent message, and I pray that it really impacted you that you heard from the Holy Spirit. Again, if you'd like to find out more about Cross Connection Church, please visit our website at lifeinconnection.com. And we would like to invite you to our in-person services um, at 8.30 a.m. and 10.30 here in Escondido, California. So if you're around and you can make it to one of those services, we would love for you to be here live in person at 8.30 and 10.30. God bless you guys, and have a great week. Good morning, Cross Connection Church. It's Pastor Garrett here, or Santa, and it's that time of the year again. So uh, we would like to invite you to join us for our Christmas Eve Eve service. And we're gonna have two different service times, one at five o'clock and one at 6.30. Again, that's gonna be Christmas Eve Eve, or as some of you like to call it, Christmas Adam, because he came before Eve. So we'd like to see you there. Again, five o'clock and 6.30, that's going to be um, Christmas Eve Eve on um, the December 23rd. So check that out. Times will be on the website available for you to check out later, but invite some friends, invite some family. We're going to have a great time. Miles is going to share a Christmas message and we're going to have 30 kids singing in our Christmas choir this year. So you don't want to miss that. It's going to be amazing. So hope to see you there. And of course, Christmas Day and New Year's Day both fall on Sundays this year. So we're going to be combining and just doing one service at 10 o'clock. 30 in the morning here at Cross Connection Church on both Christmas Day and New Year's Day. So we hope that you can join us for those services as well. Again, Christmas Day and New Year's Day, 1030 here at the church. Love to see you there and uh, ring in the new, uh, the new year with Cross Connection Church and of course celebrating Christmas Day with us as well. So.